Um, so as I was saying, when you actually go into the curriculum map area, the details of the curriculum map will show up. There's some information here. These document structures, the header, the topic structures, or the lesson structures are the templates that show up in the map later on. So I'll review those in a second. When you actually, um, you notice that some of them um, have a course number missing. When we add the course number in there, this curriculum map will show up for the various teachers. So um, I'm also going to um, actually um, make this active at some point. So right now it's inactive, which means that um, nobody sees it on their planner yet. So um, when I click on the chart here, what it does is it goes in and actually shows me the uh, curriculum map. And now I can actually go in and I can see the entire curriculum map uh, and this is what everyone sees and if you notice there is a uh, main topic so this is the main topic document structure and when I click on it it just highlights it in red and in fact when I click in any area within a curriculum map that information is highlighted in red as well and just for your information, I've, I've muted everyone so I don't get the feedback um, right now. So if you have a question, just use the chat feature and, and I'll unmute you so I can hear you. Um, so when I click on the main topic, any of the subtopics also are displayed in the curriculum map. So you notice that there's the main topic of grade four writing 2013. And then there's narrative writing, informational writing, and opinion writing. And when I scroll down, this is narrative writing. So narrative writing starts on day one and is 60 days. Informational writing, whoops, let me close this. Infor informational writing is starts on day 61 and lasts for 60 days. And then opinion writing starts on day 120 and lasts for 61 days because the school year is now 181 days long. So what this will allow us to do is it allows us to actually go in and add information in each of the areas. And to get into the document structure, I can either double click on a topic or a subtopic or the far left hand box in the area will allow me to open up the entire document structure. So if I double click on grade four writing 2013 here, basically it gives me the entire document structure for the header, right? So it says this is the WWPS curriculum header and it gives us a place to put in a pacing if we wanted to. And more importantly, it actually allows us to actually add the standards. And so if you notice, these are the standards that are available in this curriculum map. And there are quite a few here because this is these are all of the standards for the 180 days. And if I click on edit, what that will do is that will bring me to the place where I can add standards. And so initially, when I'm selecting standards, the application assumes that um, I'm starting out at, at the ground floor. And right now it says that I've selected 31 out of 5,031 standards in the curriculum mapping tool. And I can go in and say, well, I really wanted to look at the Rhode Island standards here. And when I do that, it brings me to the next level. And I can go in and say, well, not only did I want the Rhode Island standards, I wanted the Rhode Island standards in written and oral communication. And then it allows me to go in and select the grade level that I want. And then the area that I want to work in. So if I was 
looking at applying narrative strategies here, I could go in and choose any of these standards now. And if you notice, my standards that I have over here, all of these standards are common core standards. So if I wanted to add a GLE or GSE in here, I could do that. And so I could add this grade level standard and click OK, and that would get added to my list. And so now, if I scroll through my list, I should find the Rhode Island standard here. And in fact, so you can see that these are all common core standards. And this standard right here is a GLE. I could click save and close. And then that GLE gets added to my list over here as well. If I want to go in and remove that, I simply click on the, um, the pencil so I can edit. I go to my list and I click on the little red X here. Once I click on that little red X, it will actually delete it from my list. I click OK. And basically what that's done now is that's removed that standard whoops, from my major list over here. So what's kind of cool about this is when you select a standard in the overall document structure or the header, it really cascades those standards to all the other subtopics. So instead of me having to go through the list and repick those standards, those will automatically show up. So if I go in and say I want to work in narrative writing next, I just click on this and narrative writing shows up here. I can again double click here or double click here. And when I do that, the topic structure shows up. When I click inside a box, I get the rich text editor. So I can actually go in here and say, gee, I really wanted this to be larger. And so now once I've done that, um, it just makes it larger. I can go in, add pictures in there. I can add web links. I can do whatever I need to do in this rich text editor. Once I click outside of the box, into another box or another field that was automatically saved and you can see right here that that information was auto saved at 1021 so once you click out of a box it auto saves but you can always go back to revert so if you notice there's this little revert button what that does is that just kind of backs you up it's like an undo and that works until i click the save button here once I click that save button, it's really kind of like it does a hard save there. And it doesn't allow me to do that undo button. If I click delete, it deletes the entire document structure there or that subtopic. So that's something you really want to be careful about. Um, you don't want to um, click delete when you're in a, a main topic or a subtopic because it's going to get rid of it all. Okay. So if you notice, here's the title for this document, uh, for this part of the curriculum map. It's narrative writing. It starts on day one and lasts for 60 days. And we're using the unit map topics. The key instructional outcomes are listed in here. The designing coherent instructional strategies are listed. And I'm just going to kind of cycle through each of these. We didn't put anything in terms of designing formative assessments here, but we did put in summative assessments. And then we have the standards. And so if I click on edit here, you'll see that the standards that show up, most of it is already filled in here because basically what it did was it said, Gee, I know that they chose from the, this list of 53 standards. They're probably going to want to pick from those. And so if you notice, most of these are writing standards, but we've also listed a few language standards in here and a few speaking and listening standards. So those will automatically show up as well. If you wanted to add a reading standard, 
you could actually click on the remove button and it backs you up so that you can go back and um, select another area if you needed to. So I could go back and choose um, reading. And it looks like this is a little bug right now. So if I click back all the way to here, if that doesn't work, and that might happen sometimes because um, this is really a new feature that we're, we're um, testing out. If you click the show all button, it brings you back to the beginning. And you could go in and say, I really wanted Common Core. I wanted ELA. And I wanted Grade 4. And I wanted the reading standards. And then what that will do is allow me to go in and pick from the reading standards. So I could say, gee, I wanted to really look at uh, the literature standards here and choose one of those. And they either show up here in this list like this, or they just all are populated right here. So I'm going to click the cancel button because we've already added the standards that we need. And I am going to click save and close and come back out because what's really cool about this is this is kind of a a pacing guide if you will right because it shows me what's taking place in each trimester but what really is exciting for me is the fact that this connects to lesson plans because to me that's really what teachers need like they need this overall view but what we really need are kind of, you know, if we want to get to this point for a summative assessment, here are the lessons that we probably could use to get to that point. So if I go into narrative writing and I click on the show lesson plans button here, what that does is that kind of ex expands my map so that I can see I have a series of lessons here. And in fact, I can see that in narrative writing, I believe that I have five different lessons. Okay, so if I, because I clicked on this and it's highlighted in red, all of the lessons now show up below it. So these are the lessons for day one, launching the workshop. So if I click on this, it's going to bring up that template for a lesson plan, which is different than the template for the overall map topic, right? And it shows me that I have a title called Launching the Writer's Workshop, a year-long adventure. And then we have the instructional outcomes, the mini lesson, exploration and guided practice, independent practice, summarize and debrief, materials, the assessments that could be used, and then the standards. And notice, there are only two standards here. So in this one lesson, we're only, really only looking at two standards. What's really exciting as far as I'm concerned, because like even though this is all fleshed out, like most teachers don't need this. Like most of us, I think for brand new teachers, this is really cool to have. But for most of us, um, we don't really need you to lead us through the lesson step by step. Like we don't need you to put the process and procedure in. What we really need are the resources. So if I scroll in here and I look at materials, there are actually places for us to add materials into the, the lesson. So I think what we all need to have at the very least are materials the standards, and maybe any assessments that are used in a lesson. Because that will really help guide me as an educator as to what I need to do. And in fact, I'm going to click Save and Close. And come up here and show content so that you can see we actually have some places where we put in some resources. So on day two, you can see that there's, a less, there, there's actually a resource right here. And on day three, there are resources right here as well. So I'm going to go into day three so we can see what those resources look like. So again, I double clicked on, on that title box. 
and you can see that when I scroll through the resources actually show up at the bottom here so if I click on this it's going to actually open up that resource. And to me, that's really powerful for teachers to be able to get all of those documents in one place. The resources could be any resource. It could be a video. It could be a web link. They could be, this is a Google Doc. They could be a Word document. They could be a PDF. It doesn't matter what the resource is. They can all go in there. And so um, you'll notice that if I scroll through, this is the peer editing, it's called PQP, Praise, Question, and Polish. And this is for peer editing in a writer's workshop classroom. Okay, so I'm going to close that. It also has the PQP for teachers. So not only does it have the resource, but it also gives teachers some additional information if they need it. So not everyone needs this, um, but for a new teacher, this might be really valuable information. And then if I click here, this is something that um, we have called Living Like Writers, Noticing Details. So I guess this was something that we used out of the text um, that we wanted to make sure all students had access um, to. So whenever you wanna add a resource, you simply click on the My Resources button and this floating window pops up. Do you guys see that? Let me un unmute you. Patty, do you see that? Yep. I do. Excellent. Awesome. So that, that floating window allows us to pick resources from Aspen. So if you notice, um, there are some windows in here that are mine, right? So this blank folder, that's my folder. This home folder is a shared folder. That folder is actually on everyone's computer in the district. So remember that home page when we logged in, there was a resource folder. That's this folder here. This is a folder that's shared just between a, the math department professional learning community group and everything else is just mine. So you can actually add any document that you, you'd like. So if I click add, and I wanted to add a Google Doc, I could click on Google Doc. If I wanted to add a document, I could click File, and it's gonna allow me to go through the process of choosing a file for my computer. So I can say that, well, I really wanted everyone to see, uh, oops. Let's see, this is uh, grade four. I really wanted everyone to be able to see uh, the parent letter here. So I'm gonna click open and I could put a description in there if I wanted to. I'll click save and that parent letter is gonna show up in my resources now. So if I, scroll through here oops um where did that go? Sorry. So parent letter. I don't think I put it in a folder. Oh, there it is. 
Sorry, having a little problem um, reading on my screen. So I could just go in and take this resource now and dump it into my materials. So I can grab it and drag it. And you'll see that that little red X shows me I can't drop it here. Little green arrow or check mark shows me that I can drop it here. So when I let go of it, it's now added to my resources here. I can close that window and click Save and Close. And now that document will show up in my... I'm going to click my show content box again so I can see all of my resources and that should show up in my day three resources here. So I notice that I have multiple resources in here so I could go through and choose the one that I want and just click on it and it should show up and pop up for me. So you can add any resources that you need for a specific lesson. So I'm going to actually go in and add a lesson to this. Okay. Yeah, Jill. Yep. Go ahead. I just have a question about that. So with the resources, in order, do you even have to, you don't have to upload your Google Docs, though, do you? Like, you can just connect to them. Sure, you can. The only, things, mm -hmm. the only things that would need to be in your resources. Are, okay, so that won't take up any space is what I'm saying. Nope, not at all. Because I, I know there's a quote on how many resources you can have. Oh, there isn't a quota. There, there is, but we set the quota, so if we need to increase it, we can. So there's a basic quota for, for students and teachers, okay. but if we need to change it, we can change it. So it's not really it's not really that big of a problem. But the Google Docs take up nothing. Right, they're really just a link. But the Google Docs don't take anything. Yeah, absolutely correct. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only Thank things you. that take space are Word documents and actual files that you upload. Um, into into Aspen, video clips, audio clips, or whatever. Um, but we can also change that if we needed to. Because there will be some courses, some classrooms that need more space than others. Okay, thank you. Okay. So if I want to add a lesson, you simply click on the topic that you want to add the lesson to. So right now, I have informational writing showing up. If I go to add and I drag down to add a lesson topic, that's going to go into informational writing now. So I can say I want this to be, um, you know, a test and it's going to start on day 61 and it's going to last for a day. And I click save and close and what that does is that takes that lesson now and pops it into here. And if you notice, I got this little X mark because I really went, uh, it says that I put it well beyond where it needed to go. I can drag it in because I'm saying, oops, this was supposed to start over here. Because what I told it to do was start on day 61 of this unit and it was outside of the unit. So what's kind of cool about this is it allows me to kind of pull it wherever it needs to go into the lesson. Um, and right now the functionality isn't here where I can um, take something and drag it up, but it will be very shortly. So if I have a lesson that I put in the wrong place or in the wrong unit, I, I'll be able to drag and drop it within um, a higher um, or a lower place in the, in the curriculum unit. So I can then, if I wanted to, I could double click on this and it brings up that structure. And I could say, gee, I want to add my standards. And again, it goes through and says, gee, you already picked these 24 standards. Which one do you want to address here? So I could say, this one really is about um, correcting, uh, correctly using frequently confused words, right? That that's what this less, mini lesson is all about today. And I could click. Um, OK, and it's going to take that lesson and that unit uh, standard 
and just dump it right in there. And I could go in and pick the resource that I wanted to do and give it a title and say, that's really all people need for this lesson. They really don't need a lot more. Um, or I could say, gee, I have, I actually have a worksheet that my students use during this lesson, and I'm going to put that in my materials here. You may have multiple worksheets because um, we've really worked so hard at differentiating and modifying tasks for kids that you might have tiered resources in here for your students in your classroom. So you'll be able to just dump them all into the materials area, and that really will help solidify for me as, as another teacher what your tiered instruction might look like, like what that might mean for you in this specific class uh, lesson. Lesson. So I'm going to click Save and Close. Um, if I if I really don't want a lesson, like I want to get rid of this, I can actually again double click it to open it and click Delete, and it gives me this real big bright warning sign. Deleting this lesson plan will, record will also delete the following related records. And it's going to delete record number eight, the curriculum narrative, and record number one, the curriculum standards. So it just deletes those two pieces of information that you put into the table, right? If you end up seeing that it's going to delete like 15 records, you might want to stop and say, uh-oh, did I click on a topic structure maybe or a topic heading um, usually you'll see that you know it, it it's just something that people will have to stop and really read We're we're very good at seeing boxes like this now and just clicking OK um, and I've already done it myself where I deleted an entire uh, unit of study and there's no way of getting it back you actually have to go through and recreate it um, so in, in a document structure or curriculum structure, you can add topics and you can add lessons. So I'm going to actually back out of here and go through the process of adding a completely new curriculum map. So if I click on curriculum maps again, it brings me back out here. To add a new map, I go to options and add. And I'm going to call this test curriculum map and I'm going to say that it's a semester course it's 90 days and it wants me to go in and pick a, a header structure and so basically um, what I want to do is I'm going to use the overall header without a title because really I just want the, the standards in there and the topic structure is the map topics and what we've done is we've actually created a structure called unit map topics PD office and I think that's the one that probably makes the most sense for the district and then we've created a lesson structure and so I'm going to scroll through and it's called lesson plan structure I don't need to put a course number in or make it active right now but all of this with the, the little asterisk, that is actually necessary, necessary in order for you to save your, your uh, curriculum map. So if I click Save, it's really going to take that curriculum map called Test Curriculum Map now, and it's going to save it for me. So if I click on the Chart button, it actually will bring me to my curriculum map and shows you that it's 90 days. It's called Test Curriculum Map. It's got this little box for pacing and standards. So I can go in and start selecting my standards right now. So I'm going to say that this is actually a music course. So I'm going to go to Rhode Island and I'm going to go into the Fine Arts and Music. And I'm going to say that this is for grades uh, K to 2. And 
the kids are looking at aesthetic judgment, music knowledge. So students des describe the use of musical. And if I wanted to see what this was, because I didn't know it, I could click on it and it's going to show me that entire standard there. So that pop-up box will um, let me see the entire standard. So I'm going to click OK. And if I select it, it's going to show up over here. So I'm just going to randomly select a few standards. They show up here and I can go in and add a map topic to this. So I'm going to ask Patty to just give me a topic that kids would would use in um, in in music. Matching pitch. What, what was that? Spitting pitch? Matching pitch. Matching, no, matching pitch. pitch. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. So so I am going to click on my main topic and click add and click add map topic. And I'm going to call it matching pitch. And I'm going to start it on day one. And how long does that usually last, Patty? A whole year. A whole year. So because we only have 90 days in the semester, so I'm going to put 90. And I'm just going to click Save and Close so that you can see that matching pitch shows up the entire year now. right? And if I wanted to edit anything in here, I could go in and edit it now. And so what's really cool about this, too, is that you can see that here's that document structure. So if you had any summative assessments that were in there, those would go into this box. If you had formative assessments, they would go into this box and so on and so forth. And you could go in and add individual lessons now. So I could go in and add a lesson plan. And this one would be called um, High C. And I'm going to say that this starts on day 25, and it's one day. And so what that does is that shows up now here. And if I knew that there was another one that I wanted to add, and this one was called Low C, and I don't even know if that's anything possible or not, Patty. Okay. My, con <laughs> my content knowledge is really shining here. And I'm going to say that this starts on day 30. And I click Save and Close. Then it just shows you that those different lessons show up. And so I could go, and it shows you the name of the lesson, too, when I mouse over it. So this one's called High C, and this one's called Low C. And I could go in and add whatever I needed to for those lessons. So now you can see that there's the topic structure, but this is what the lesson structure looks like. And so for, you know, again, for most teachers, they're just going to need the materials that you need, the standards that you're moving towards in the lesson, and then any assessments that you might be using. <clears throat> So I'm going to click on my curriculum maps to bring you back out here just so I can show you kind of what it, it looks like when we kind of put it all together. And in fact, um, I know 12th grade English has worked on their curriculum map quite a bit. And you can scroll through and you can see this is basically their sequence for the school year. And it's kind of cool that you can really see it pretty fleshed out. And these are the summative assessments that they're going to use. And I could go in and go into this Anglo-Saxon period. It's 50 days. And I could go through here and see that this is a PowerPoint that they're using. This is, this is a document that they're, that they're using, and this, and this is the actual summative assessment that they're using. All of those, all of those resources, resources are available, available. Um, as, well as, as well as the standards that they're moving toward. Whoops.
So for those, so for of, those of us who really, really love paper, I'm just going to mute Patty. Patty. I think her. that's her. Um, um, for those, for of, those us of us who really, really love paper, paper you can actually, you can actually go, go into here, here and, click, and click view, and you, and you actually, actually get a, a completely, completely printable, printable view, view of the, of the unit. This, this, this is the this, this full, full year unit. unit. These are these all, are of, the all of the standards that they're moving towards in this grade by 12, 12 course. course. And then, then you actually, you actually see, see that, that this, is this is unit unit of study study one. one. It's five, five days, days long. long. And, and, and it starts, starts on day one. Day one. It's called the staff establishing expectation learning baseline. baseline. And you can go, go through row and see. And see what was being done, done in each of the units. Unit. So you actually, so you actually, actually get rather to rather nice out. out. Um, um, if you wanted, if you wanted to. to. And then and any of the documents, documents show, up show up as well. As well this, 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 so, so we can actually, can actually go through. Row, row. Oops, wait a second. Yep. 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 yep, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, you're, 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 the, the sound is really not good right now. It's sounding kind of like Darth Vader. Oh, is that me? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be you. Wait a second. Let me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It has to be you because you you had everyone else muted. Is that any better? Any better. No. Yeah. No. All right. Let All me right, do let this. Me do this. Uh, so it's a little scratchy. I mean, I, I deal with it. It's scratchy. Okay. Okay. Sorry about, Sorry about that. that. It, it looks like someone's trying to arrive in the call, and they haven't been, they haven't got here yet. I think it's causing a little bit of an issue. So basically, this printout will allow us to print out the document if we wanted to, um, and it really shows up um, rather nicely. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, I can call in to the phone if that will be better. Should I do that? I mean, I'm only going to be on a couple more minutes. No, it's, it's, it's actually not as terrible as it was. It's not as okay. bad. All right, great. So this printout is available for folks um, if they want to print it out. So I know some of us really like to do that. So um, really, it allows you to go through and, and print out the entire unit of study. Um, and actually is probably a great resource for um, the high school folks during their NEASC accreditation this year. Um, so, um, so basically this really just connects back to, um, you know, the entire course. What's important about all of this is that at all of this, the curriculum map actually connects back to the teacher's planner or their plan book and their grade book. So it allows us to actually have a really tight integration between what we say we should be teaching, what teachers actually say they are teaching, and then what we're actually assessing. Because this connects back to the grade book. So in the grade book has a place in there for your student learning objectives, for PBGR information. So it really allows you to actually make a tight connection between um, something that we're moving towards in the curriculum and then how students perform on that. So it allows us to actually use multiple data points for student learning objectives versus just um, using one data point like NECAP or PARC or um, it would be like uh, if Patty's kids had to use um, all state uh, auditions as their assessment for her class. You know, it probably just um, great exercise, great opportunity for kids, um, gives a lot of good feedback, but probably not the only measure that you want to use to look at your effectiveness as a classroom teacher. Um, so. Um, We've 
we've really created a lot of resources for people to kind of see how to do these things step by step. Um, I just wanted to kind of give people the opportunity to uh, peek in, take a look at it, um, and not be afraid to use it um, when the opportunity is available. Um, I've unmuted every, everybody, so if anyone has uh, any questions, go right ahead. Not right now. No, no questions. This looks great, though. It's really a cool tool as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it, I think it has a lot of potential. I, I think it's exciting to be able to actually find curricula in the district in one place. So any other things that you have uh, wonderings about? Well, not right now. I think once we, you know, do more work with it and actually start to use it, um, questions will come up. But like I said, for, for now, it looks great. I know you put a lot of time and work into it, so thank you for that. Oh, no problem, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys have a good day, and I appreciate you taking your time out of your summer. All right. Have a good day. Okay, thanks, Jim. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Jill. Bye, Patty. Bye-bye.